Let's solve a system by completing Gauss-Jordan elimination. So remember, in Gauss-Jordan Gauss -Jordan elimination, our goal is to get these leading ones in this staircase pattern. Uh, and then over here, it will be nice to get either numbers or variables, uh, depending on the actual problem. Usually, we would want our leading one in the topper, I mean, in the upper left-hand corner. And so this is our goal. Uh, using our elementary row operations, our goal is to get this leading one up here. So my general strategy is usually we would want this part to be first, and then this zero would be second, this one would be third. And then uh, from there, we would want perhaps a leading one in the second row and then we want a zero below that and then this six leading one is key and then we want a seventh zero up here and then we want an eighth position of a zero there and then finally this would sort of be our ninth step now that is the strategy um, unfortunately with elementary row operations you don't necessarily get these ones and zeros in that particular order uh, usually though these once you get these are, are usually the first few numbers that you would want you would get that one and you would get that zero and then from there uh, you might have to deviate a little bit uh, to get the other zeros and ones so why don't we strategize now and try to solve this system the first thing you want to do is write the augmented matrix. Your augmented matrix is a 3 by 4. So it's a 3 by 4 matrix here. Three by four matrix, and I'm just gonna write the five, the zero, the negative one. And then where the equal signs are, we're going to draw a dotted line, negative 31, negative 2, negative 2, 1, 17, 0, negative 5, 2, and 7. So before, uh, before Gauss-Jordan elimination, you would do this either with substitution or the addition method, and it could be an organizational nightmare. So cool, the cool thing about Gauss-Jordan elimination is that uh, you will be able to organize your work um, through a lot of small precise steps okay our first goal once again is to get this leading one in the upper left hand corner the way we're going to do that is take one of the elementary row operations which is uh, multiply by a row multiply by a single row and add it to another row and the way we write that ele elementary row operation is 2 times row 2 add it to row 1 and with this arrow here I'm gonna say we're gonna store in row 1 so the next line of work that I'm gonna write is definitely row equivalent symbol the row equivalent symbol is this tilde that means row equivalent and then we simply copy the matrix well I shouldn't say copy the matrix the, um, we're going to copy row 2 and row 3 right away because those rows do not change. The only thing that changes is row 1 because we're going to store in row 1 now. So let's take 2 times row 2, uh, add it to row 1. So negative 4 add 5 is 1, negative 4 add 0 is negative 4 and then 2 add negative 1 2 add negative 1 is 1 34 add negative 31 is 3 now we got our leading one our goal is to get the zeros below it so notice we already got this zero that's kinda nice but our goal now is to get this zero so we're gonna pivot from row 1 and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna do 2 times row 1 2 times row 1 add it to row 2 in fact we are going to store in row 2 once again we use the tilde symbol to represent row equivalent 
and this time we copy row 1 and row 3. So notice I, I don't want to uh, spend too much work I don't want to overuse my brain so that's why I copy the rows that don't change. We are changing row 2 though. Okay. Now, remember our goal. Our goal is to get the third zero. I mean, get the get this first leading one, get the zeros below it, and now we want a one here. Uh, and there's many ways to do that. Uh, but I, at the same time, I want to avoid fractions. So if I can, I'm going to try to avoid fractions as, as much as possible. I'm actually, ironically, I'm going to, I see that five could go into ten, and I'm actually going to introduce uh, as another zero so that I could avoid fractions. I don't want to do negative one tenth times row two because then if you do that then you're gonna have fractions for the rest of the problem so the strategy right now is to avoid fractions I'm gonna try something else uh, avoid fractions here so I'm gonna do negative two row three and add it to row two I'm going to change row 2. Make sure you're very, very neat with this, okay? I tend to work vertical when I'm doing matrices. It's just easier that way. So row 1 and row 3 doesn't change, so I'm just going to recopy those. Now the row that does change is row 2. 0 and then we have a zero. Then we have negative four added to three. So negative one. Four, negative 14 added to 23, nine. Okay. And so notice this, this procedure allows me to avoid fractions. Let's do another elementary row operation. Let's do row Let's do row three, switch with row two. And so this time, row one uh, doesn't change. To recopy that. And then switch the other two rows. Ironically here, it, it makes sense for me to do what? It makes sense for me to do something more obvious. So I'm going to do negative uh, row 3. Multiply row 3 by negative 1. So only row 3 changes. And remember with elementary row operations, you can only do one of them at a time. ready to get this fourth leading one. So I avoided fractions for a while, but it looks like I'm at a point where I'm going to need to use fractions for the second row. So I am going to do now negative one-fifth times row two. That is row equivalent to once again, make sure you're very, very neat with this. Just recopy row one and recopy row three. So recopying the rows that don't change will help you prevent a lot of mistakes as well. And if you do make a mistake, uh, you're going to realize it and then the best thing to do is actually just start the problem over.
it's very hard to catch your own mistake when you're doing these kind, kind of problems. All right, where are we in our strategy? Okay, we got the one, we got the zero, we got the zero. We got the one, we got the zero. We got this one, so our goal now is to get this to be a zero. Okay, get this position here to be a zero. We would like this position here to have a zero. Now we're going to pivot from row three. If we pivot from row three, what does that mean? We're going to take, we are going to take uh, two fifths times row three, row three, and add it to row two. I am going to have to erase this just to make room for my paper here. Use lots of papers when you do these kind of problems. Once again, be very, very neat. Write everything. Very, very neat. Very, very organized. Being organized and neat also helps you prevent mistakes. Row 1 doesn't change. Row 2 is changing, but row 3 doesn't change. And we're ready to change row two. Zero, one. We got a zero here now. We also have, let's see, looks like we have negative 18 fifths added to negative 7 fifths. But negative 18 at negative 7 is negative 25. And then put that over 5, we get uh, negative 5. Ooh, how convenient. Now we are ready to do. Uh, well, we're ready to make another zero in the first row. So why don't we do negative row three, add it to row one. That's row equivalent to, this time row one is going to change. Row three is not. And row two is not. So we have one, negative four. And now we have a zero. And then we have nine plus three is twelve. One more zero to go. And how are we going to get that? We're going to do negative four times row two. Add it to row one. Remember, this tilde means row equivalent. You cannot use an equal sign. We're going to use a tilde sign to represent row equivalent. This time, row 2 doesn't change. Row 3 doesn't change. And we have a 1. Let's see here. We have a 0 here. We have another 0 here. And we have 20 we have a 20 plus row 1 so it looks like I got a 32 here I made a mistake. I apologize. I didn't mean to write negative four times row two. I meant to write four times row two. So I got very lucky there. I'm lucky that I even caught that mistake. And like I said, if you made a mistake and you can't find it, sometimes the best thing to do with these problems is to start all over. So four times row two added to row one. Let's try that again. So row two and row three doesn't change, but row one does. This is a zero. This is a zero. And then we got negative 20 added to 12. This is negative eight. Ah, now how do we read this? 
The way we read this is actually from bottom to top. So we're going to do something called back substitution. So z is equal to negative 9, y is equal to negative 5, and then x is equal to negative 8. So our set of solutions is actually just a set of a single solution, or what we say mathematically, this is a set that consists of a unique solution. A set consisting of a unique solution. This unique solution is called an ordered triple. Negative 8, comma, negative 5, comma, negative 9, and then put a parentheses, and then there it is. An ordered triple, which means you are in three dimensions. So your axes would look something like that. And so, well, I guess depending on your subject, your axes could look like that, right? An x, y, and z. And then that ordered triple is actually in that uh, three-dimensional space. Let's circle our final answer. And there you go. That's how you solve a system of linear equations by completing Gauss-Jordan elimination.